time for another camcorder review. I haven't done one in a while. It is a Panasonic mini DV tape camcorder from around the year 2000. It is model PV DV400. Digital palm quarter with palm sight. Featuring 18 times optical zoom. They call it a high definition zoom lens. 300 times digital zoom. Three-way PC link and PCM stereo sound with the built-in stereo microphone. Also has an external microphone jack, although it's not a powered microphone jack, so you cannot use a microphone that requires plug-in power. Under this cover, it also has headphone output, firewire port for connecting to a computer or a, another camcorder or a DVD recorder. AV output for your standard composite video and also an S-video output. Although those are just outputs so you cannot record video from an external source on this model. Has a very nice rocker zoom control. A feature only found on professional camcorders these days. And there's this little tab on the hand strap here at first I didn't know what that was for, but then I realized in the back of the lens cap there's a little slot for that tab. So when you're using the camcorder, instead of just having the lens cap hanging loose, you attach it to that little tab there and it stays put. It has a color viewfinder that can pull out and swing up, and also a 3 inch LCD. And inside here is a multimedia card slot, which was the predecessor to SD cards. I tried putting in an SD card and it was very tight going in, so I didn't want to force it. So I don't think it's compatible with SD cards. And I don't have any multimedia cards to test it with. But that would be just for taking still photos. It would not be for recording video. Actually, I do have a multimedia card, but it's not recordable. It's this Disney Greatest Hits music card. You can see it has fewer contacts on it than an SD card. And it's also slightly thinner. So it slides right into this slot here, no problem. So there is a slight difference in thickness between a SD card and a multimedia card. It has this weird port here that says to PC. That's a serial port for transferring your photos from a multimedia card to your computer. So it does not have USB, only has a serial connection, which requires a special cable. Also has electronic image stabilization, which unusually works both during recording and during playback. So if you recorded a scene without using image stabilization, you can turn this feature on during playback and it will try to stabilize the image. But it's not as good as optical image stabilization. Also has a accessory shoe for mounting an external light or a microphone or anything else you want to put up there. Although when I tried a microphone attached to the accessory shoe like this, it picked up the vibration from the tape mechanism as a constant hum in the audio. So if you're going to use an external microphone, you're better off keeping it separate from the camcorder. And this looks like a focus ring, but it's not. It's just a decoration. The manual focus control is this little wheel down there in the corner. It also has a lens thread for attaching something like a wide-angle lens or a fisheye lens. But the most interesting feature of this camcorder is right here, this switch that says IR filter. Which is actually a misnomer because what it does is when you turn it on it removes the infrared filter which allows infrared light to get to the image sensor and it also has infrared luminaire LEDs behind this little panel here. So this has Panasonic's version of Night Shot which lets you record video in total darkness using infrared night vision. Because back in the early 2000s when this camcorder was new, Sony had night shot on pretty much all of their camcorders. So of course the other camcorder manufacturers wanted to have their own version of it. I have reviewed several other camcorders with this feature, including Sharp, which called their version of it Super Cat's Eye. Samsung called their version of night shot Power Night Picks. And in Panasonic's case, they called it Magic View Zero Lux. Although this one does not use that name, it just says IR Filter. 
I did not get the camcorder with a battery or a power supply, but I do have a power supply from a different Panasonic camcorder that is able to power it with this cable here, although the battery this is designed for is too small to fit this camcorder, so that's not compatible. But at least the AC adapter part of it is compatible, so we can use it. Just open up the screen and turn on the switch here. And it comes to life and I actually have the night shot mode turned on right now. So turn that off. There we go. So that's normal recording mode. And if I turn on the IR filter switch, you can see it turns black and white. But you can actually change that in the menu if you go to setup and then go to IR color. You can change it between black and white, blue, and green. Here you can see those infrared illuminator LEDs if I turn on the IR filter mode. There's two infrared LEDs in the middle there. And also if you hit record, you get a little red tally light on the front there to let people know that you're recording. Like I said, I did not get a battery with this camcorder and those battery terminals are rather difficult to get to but rigging up an external battery is actually quite easy. All you need is a connector to fit the AC adapter input there and a couple clip leads and a handy cam battery since this provides pretty much the same voltage that the original Panasonic battery would. So here it is running on battery power. And the tape goes in the side here. So now I'll switch over to the Panasonic and give you a sample of its video quality and how well its night vision performs. So now I'm recording using the Panasonic PVDV400. This camcorder does not have a widescreen mode, although it has several digital effects, which I'll try to go through here. This is the mirror mode, which just takes whatever is on the left side of the screen and repeats it on the right side, so you can do some rather interesting visual effects with it. You can also do a wipe effect, which I think gives you a transition between scenes. Just like that. So when you hit record, it captures the last frame of the last scene you just recorded and sort of transitions to the next scene. There's another transition it calls mix. So we'll see what kind of effect that produces. That just sort of fades from one scene to the next. So I guess in the days before video editing on a computer, it was nice to have these kind of effects in a camcorder. And this is the so-called slim mode, which squishes the image from side to side. And I think if you stretch it out on a widescreen TV, it will give you a widescreen image. So this may be a pseudo 16 by 9 mode. So now I turned off most of my lights to see how well the night vision works on this camcorder. So I'll turn off the last light over here. Just a little bit of light coming from the other side of the room. So now we'll switch on night vision mode, which seems to work quite well, actually. It has two infrared LEDs built in, and they seem to be pretty bright. So that does a pretty good job of lighting up the scene. And here's how it looks with the color switched to blue instead of the default black and white. And to make it look more like night shot, you can switch it to green. But I think the default black and white mode is the most appealing to look at, because this is rather sickly shade of green here. It's not quite the same as the green of a true Sony night shot mode. Now I'm in an even darker part of the basement, so you can pretty much see nothing in the regular recording mode. And I actually turned on a setting that puts a little symbol of a candle on the screen and it seems to electronically brighten the image a little bit so that may help the performance so I'll switch on the IR mode 
And that's doing pretty good, I'd say. Although the electronic image stabilization does not work in low light, so it, its symbol is actually flashing right now, which means it's not going to work. It only works when the scene is a little bit brighter. But that's a pretty good night vision mode. Definitely very comparable to night shot. And if you move the switch slowly, you can actually see the infrared filter moving out of the way as you move the switch. So that's the filter moving out of the way, and then when it hits the micro switch, it goes into night vision mode. gain up mode which slows down the shutter speed to make it even brighter but it's uh, stuck in manual focus when you use this mode well, that's pretty impressive Let's see all the way back in the woods back on the normal setting. So that's the Panasonic PV-DV400 Mini DV camcorder from around the year 2000. And I'd say its night vision mode works equal to or even better than a Sony with night shot. So I was definitely impressed by that. And you can probably find one of these cheaper than a Sony because most people don't know Panasonic ever made camcorders with a night vision recording mode.